photoelectric effect. Now we have a graph of energy against F, and if we take uh, the equation by Planck, which is E is equal to HF, we know that E is proportional to F, and the constant of proportionality, or rather the gradient, is equal to, to H, and we can plot that quite easily here. So we have a straight line going through the origin. Now, you know that in the photoelectric effect, the electrons which leave the surface of the metal do not have this amount of energy because some of the energy is used up in the work function. The energy is taken up in getting the electron to be released from the surface of the metal. So, if we take this graph and we subtract the work function, in other words, the energy that's used up to release the electron, we're basically going to have a parallel line, but further um, further down with a, a lower value here. So if we move this downwards, it's going to come down basically by um, the work function. So we bring the line down here. So we have the same graph as before, but it's just been displaced um, downwards by the work function. So this basically tells us the energy of the electrons now. So it's the E is equal to HF minus the work function. We know F0 is the frequency above which we're going to get uh, electrons which are emitted. Below this frequency, we are not going to get any electrons emitted because the energy is not enough to overcome the function. So this is called a threshold frequency. So this is where the photo photoelectrons have enough energy to escape the surface with this frequency, and they just have enough energy. At high frequencies, they have more than enough energy. In this part of the graph, there are no um, photoelectrons which are emitted, basically because they do not have enough energy to overcome the work function. So we need to look at an experiment which basically is able to measure this. Here we have a, a metal plate, this negative metal plate with electrons on it, then we have a positive plate uh, on the right hand side, and we have a, a, a battery here which has charged these plates. So what happens? The light lands on the, the metal plate and gives energy to the electron. This is purple light, this is violet light, so it gives enough energy to be released and goes to the other plate. Now, it's completed the circuit, so what we're going to get is the photocurrent. Basically because the electrons are able to go from, from the cathode, which is the negative plate, to the anode, which is a positive plate. So when the electrons have been emitted from the cathode, they have the energy to cross the anode. But we want to find out how much energy exactly they have. So we basically put a reverse voltage to try to stop them. So we have to try to stop these electrons. And by putting a voltage to stop them, we know exactly how much energy they have. We swap the polarity of the battery, the cathode, which was here, and this is the anode. We're now making the anode negative with respect to the cathode. So the electron leaves and then basically is not able to go all the way across because it's repelled by the um, anode. So by reversing the potential difference, we make the anode negative enough, or the, by the stop, VS is a stopping voltage, to stop even the most energetic electrons. But this is too much. We, we need to put a stopping voltage which is just enough to register zero photocurrent. So the stopping potential, Vs, tells us the energy in electron volts that the fastest moving electrons have after they have overcome the work function to be ejected. And then if they're able to overcome the reverse potential, then a current will flow. So you basically have to increase the reverse potential until the current goes to zero. Then you know precisely how many electron volts the electrons have. So if Vs is measured when the, when the current is reduced to zero, then we've uh, basically found the energy of the electrons. For example, if the stopping voltage must be increased to four volts to stop the electrons, it means that these electrons must have a kinetic energy of four electron volts. Of course, that's measured in electron volts. You want to change to joules, you multiply by the charge on one electron. So let's go back to this graph again. This is a graph we have of uh, the stopping volt voltage against the frequency. At a high frequency, the electrons have a lot of energy, um, so you need a large stopping voltage uh, to stop them. So that's how you're able to find out 
at this frequency what the stopping voltage is and what the energy is because you need to put a, a large reverse voltage to stop those electrons from getting across. F0 is the threshold frequency. This is where the photoelectrons have enough energy just to escape the surface with this frequency, but no more. So you, the, the stopping voltage can be little more than zero. So the stopping voltage, the stopping potential, this gives an idea of how much energy the most energetic electrons have. There are no photoelectrons emitted in this part of the graph because it doesn't have enough to overcome the work function. Let's have another graph here. This time we're going to measure the kinetic energy. We've got the stopping voltage, Vs, which is basically the energy they have in electron volts, and multiply it by the charge on the electron. This gives the kinetic energy in joules. Remember this equation, that the energy of the photon need, has two parts. Basically, there's in, part of that is the energy needs to eject the electron, and what's left over is the amount of kinetic energy that the electrons have. If we rearrange that, um, or put different terms here, so the energy of the photon is, is equal to HF, is equal to the work function, which is the energy needed to eject the electron, plus the kinetic energy of the most energetic electrons. Um, so this graph, how does that relate to this function? Well, we look at an uh, equation for a straight line graph, y is equal to mx plus c. Can we rearrange this? Well, the y-axis is the kinetic energy, which is this term here. The horizontal axis is f, which is this term here. So we just need to rearrange there. So the kinetic energy, which is the y term, is equal to h times by f, which is f is the horizontal variable. And this, the work function, is going to be the intercept, which we know as being the negative value here. So that's why it's going to be a negative value. So the gradient is equal to h. The intercept is equal to the work function. But what happens when the kinetic energy is equal to zero? Well, by this equation, when this is equal to equal to zero, hf must be equal to the work function. So hf naught, which is particularly um, the f threshold frequency, is equal to the work function. So. K is equal to HF minus the work function, which is HF naught. And we can rearrange it this way, of course. So remember, the gradient is equal to H. The intercept is equal to the work function. And the work function is equal to HF naught. This is for a kinetic energy against frequency graph. What happens if you have a different metal surface? Well, the fo work function is going to be different, so this value, hf naught is going to be a different value. Notice that the, here the gradient is equal to h. What's going to happen? Well, the graph is basically going to shift. You're going to have a parallel line, which is going to have the same gradient, but it's going to have a different work function and a different threshold frequency. So this line basically moves to the left, as far as the intercept of the x-axis is concerned. Uh, it's a parallel line, so it's going to have the same gradient. But this new work function is going to be less. In other words, it's going to have a lower threshold frequency, which means it's easier to get electrons to be ejected from the surface of the metal, which means it's probably a more reactive metal. Let's go back to the VS, uh, the stopping voltage against frequency graph. This is the line we have again, for, uh, threshold frequency. Now we know Ke is equal to HF minus the work function. And we know that EVS from this graph, which is a kinetic energy, remember from the kinetic energy is equal to HF minus HF naught, which this is the work function. However, this is not um, EVS, this is VS. So basically, what do we need to do to this term to turn it into Vs? Well, we're multiplying by um, the charge of an electron. So we basically need to divide by the charge of an electron, divide by E, and we end up with a new equation which is, pertains to this graph, which is Vs is equal to Hf divided by E 
minus HF0 divided by E. So Vs is the y-axis, F is still the horizontal axis, but the gradient now is not H, because it's not kinetic energy against frequency, this is the stopping voltage against frequency, which where we basically divided by the charge on one electron. So the gradient is equal to H over E. And now the y-intercept is now going to be the work function divided by E. So now the gradient is H over E, and the work function, and the, the y-intercept is uh, the work function divided by E. Now, to summarize these two graphs so we don't get them mixed up, there are two ways of representing the photoelectric effect. One is with the kinetic energy against frequency. E is equal to HF minus the work function. This is the form of the, the, the Y is equal to MX plus C graph. And, the, and it's going to be measured in joules. The kinetic energy is measured in joules. Remember that the gradient is equal to H. However, when we have the stopping voltage, which is basically the kinetic energy divided by the charge on one electron, so you're going to get a stopping voltage of 4 volts or, or something. Um, energy will be, you can say, in electron volts now. And the gradient of this graph is now H over E, not H anymore.